Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla's Time News. Episode 184 on Now You Know. Brought to you as always by our wonderful Patreon patrons. Uh, we have a perk called On Air Questions of the Week with Zach and Jesse. It is a $4 perk level, and we answer as many questions as you can throw at us in 30 minutes. And we do it every month, and we just did it the other day. And there were a lot of good questions on there. Yeah. So if you're interested in asking us some questions and getting some answers, you can head over to Patreon and sign up. And as Amazon Associates, we earn from qualifying purchases. The link is down below. And we're brought to you by EcoWare.us. Start positive conversations with carbon negative products. We have new designs uploaded every week and everything that we sell is carbon offset. So every shirt, every backpack, every fanny pack and towel. And for every order, we plant a tree. All right, let's get into the Model Y. We've got so much new information about it because the Model Y is now out there in the wild. Yes. Our friend Mark from the YouTube channel Tesla Backseat Baller came across this Tesla Model Y parked in Toronto. It is one of Tesla's testing cars, as you can see by the license plate. And Mark made a few interesting discoveries. So he saw that there was a smaller B-pillar camera hole. Um, and that essentially what it seemed like was you have the same camera pointing out, but with a smaller hole, which means that if the sun is shining in, it's not going to blind the camera uh, to the same extent that it does on the Model 3. Now, a lot of people were worried that the Chrome delete on the Model Y was just some kind of peel and stick thing that would come off. But he seems to have found out that it's not a peel off thing. It's like built into the Chrome. Right. And really detail oriented here. He saw that there were more nozzles on the wiper blades on the Model Y as compared to the Model 3. So I think that that is another interesting uh, observation. I'm curious to see if that's going to carry over to the production Model Ys. Yeah, it looked like there were four nozzles per arm. Yeah, really interesting. Because, I mean, like, the Model 3s, I feel like, could have a better nozzle system. If you want to see that whole video from Mark, go over to his Tesla Backseat Baller YouTube channel and check it out. Now, Tesla's released their own video about the rear seat of the Model Y. So what are we seeing here? So we get to see everything through the back hatch of the Model Y. Um, keep in mind, there's a hatchback, whereas the Model 3 has just a trunk, which means that you have great access to the back seats. So we got to see some of the seats fold flat. It's so interesting. There are some like release buttons on the side of the of the trunk. But they're electric. They're, they're actually actuators. Yeah. So it's not just like a, a, a cable that you're pulling. But now, what is that little bar there on the on the seat? So I'm not sure. I mean, clearly it holds the middle seat up in but the Model that, Y. But does that mean that bar just sticks out the entire time? I don't know. I feel like it could f either fold in or get, you know, pushed in or something like that. I mean, or maybe you remove it. I, I don't know. It, they don't make it clear in the video. And so far, we haven't heard anything about how it works. I did like that there's a 12 volt outlet in the back. Right. So, I mean, if you wanted to, uh, you know, there are some plug in coolers that you can do. Also, um, inverters, inverters, all sorts of different stuff that you could do in the actual uh, trunk of the car. It's going to be a great camping vehicle. Now, along with the Model Y, we also got the Model Y owner's manual. So we've got a lot more information about dimensions. A lot of people want to know how much bigger or smaller is this than the Model 3. So mm -hmm. here's what we've got so far. Uh, it's 2.2 inches longer and 2.8 inches wider than the Model 3. And with the mirrors extended, you can see here that it's also wider, depending on whether they're extended or folded. Hmm. Here's the big number for me. Yep. It's 7.1 inches taller, so... which tells you where you're going to be in the car because to me that's like the big thing is like where how does it feel to be in this car so mm -hmm. if it's seven inches taller i think that you as a person are going to feel seven inches taller at least that's what we felt when we went to the unveiling of the model y and we sat in it like it was just like oh yeah you're in an suv right interestingly uh it had a slightly slightly longer wheelbase um it has a little bit more of a front overhang it has about 1.1 inch or 2.8 centimeter higher ground clearance so that's 6.6 uh, .6 inches or 16.7 centimeters of ground clearance. I was surprised that I thought it would be at least two inches higher. Well, I mean, it's more than one inch. <laughs> okay. Is that not good enough for you? I just so many people measuring it with like their coffee mugs or with their iPads. And it looked in those videos like it was much higher than one inch. Right. And that's why we measure things with measuring devices and, <laughs> and not mugs and iPads. I guess, guess so. They weren't made for that. Also, interestingly, the Model Y has wider tires as well as uh, bigger 
tires, which means that that's why it's not as efficient as the Model 3. So on the interior side, we've got 0.7 inches more front headroom and 1.7 inches more in the rear for the headroom. Just about one inch less front legroom, which I thought was interesting, but you get 5.3 more inches in the rear legroom. That's a lot. That is a lot. I mean, the, the front legroom in the Model 3 is not bad at all. I, I would say it's stellar because especially with the seat moved all the way back, you're like, wow, I have so much room. But every inch counts on the rear side. Right. So 5.3 inches is staggeringly large. The shoulder room is virtually unchanged and uh, there's 0.4 inches more front and 1.8 inches less rear hip room. So that's your, your hips. Right. Not the hips of the car. Right. Gotcha. Okay. There's 53 cubic feet more rated cargo volume. Yeah, that's quite a lot because you're talking about a hatchback now. And the weight of the vehicle is 344 pounds or 156 kilograms heavier for the long range all wheel drive configuration. And that means a 309 pound higher gross vehicle weight rating. And it'll have the same weight distribution of 46, 45%, which is a great weight distribution for all sorts of driving. But I want to see this in comparison to another SUV so I can really like see it one on one. Okay. Well, I know that you've never driven a GLC 300, but you've nope. probably seen a GLC 300. Mm -hmm. Here is a picture of a Model Y next to oh. a Mercedes GLC 300. That's so you helpful. can see the Model Y looks a lot like the Model 3 in terms of just its looks, but in terms of its size, it is bigger. Mm. As we're reading through the manual, we came across this little tidbit. It appears that there'll be no North American Model Y tow hitch. It says under towing capacity that basically uh, the Model Y is not equipped for towing. Now, this could be just right now. It could be that the Model Y right now, if you buy it right now, doesn't have towing capability right now. I'm not happy about this. I think that in Europe, they're probably going to have towing because the Model 3 in Europe has towing. Okay, okay, but that's fine. But towing for an SUV is an important thing, not just for towing a trailer, which is important, mm -hmm. but also things like bike racks. I mean, you wanna go with your family on a trip somewhere, bring along the bikes, right. you need a tow hitch to attach the bike hauler. So what? What? hello, Tesla, like, why didn't you include this? Well, one idea that I have is, I mean, right now there's a discrepancy between the Model 3s in both North America and Europe. And one of the reasons for this is I think that North Americans like to tow big, enormous, gigantic things, really big, as big as they get because, we, and also travel very long distances with them. Okay. Whereas in Europe, as we saw throughout our travels, everyone's got little teeny tiny trailers. They're basically about the size of a bed of a pickup truck right. because no one in Europe has pickup trucks. So the idea being that the people in Europe buying the Model 3, they aren't going to be towing some gigantic trailer with it. They're going to be towing little teeny tiny trailers. Who cares what you want to tow with it? Well, I as think- As long as you're under the, you know, the ratings of what it can tow. Yes, I just think that uh, basically- once you start towing big, giant loads with giant, uh, you know, if inefficient frontal areas and stuff like that, it really, really impacts the range. And you're going to have people who are going to be upset that their car couldn't tow what they thought it could in terms of, you know, being able to feasibly do a long distance road trip with, say, their giant camper. It's a sport utility vehicle. The utility part, meaning you want to be able to do stuff with the car, like put bikes on the back or tow a trailer. If there's no tow hitch... I mean, that's just dumb. Now, I know third party, you can probably get a tow hitch attached, but that at the moment, we don't know if there's any kind of electrical for the brake lights. Right. I mean, worst case, you could get something third party installed. It's just a hassle. It's a big hassle. But we did find that there's something called off-road assist in the Model Y. What's that? So uh, I'll just kind of read through what is in the manual. Off-road assist is designed to provide overall improvements when driving off-road. In addition to allowing the wheels to spin, off-road assist balances the torque between the front and rear motors, optimizing traction. Off-road assist improves traction on rough and soft surfaces where one side of the vehicle may lose traction while the other side still has traction. When off-road assist is on, the accelerator pedal provides much more gradual torque, which is useful for crawling at low speeds, for example, over rocky surfaces. So I think that this is a really interesting feature. It's something we haven't seen on any of the other uh, Teslas. We've right. seen slip start, um, but we haven't seen anything called off-road assist. I think that this has a lot to do with people who are going to want to camp in the Model Y. Yeah, I guess I'm just still a little upset about the tow hitch thing. I can't I can't move on. I'm <laughs> I, having trouble moving on. From did that. you order a Model Y? Like no, what, but, what are you so upset about? Well, I mean the Model X has it. 
And sure. it's, it's awesome. It allows you to do the bikes and the trailers, which we've used it for both. And, and, and it's removable. And it's removable. Sure. I mean, it's just, and so it's like, well, you already figured out how to do it, Tesla. And so you, just stick it on That's there. true. You figured out how to do it for the Model 3, so it shouldn't be that much harder to figure it out for right. the Model and if, Y. If, I mean, if the Model 3 has it, then why wouldn't you put it on the Model Y? And I just, if it is going to come out later, then that just confuses people. You're just going to get all these people who get it home and are like early buyers of it who don't have it. And, and they'll be frustrated. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I, I think... I don't know if they're trying to play this this balancing act between uh, backlash from people who are like, I can't tow my enormous trailer a thousand miles in a day. I just, normally could. I mean, on the Model X, when I got mine, it was added as a as an extra tow package. Mm -hmm. So just have it as an extra. You pay for it if you want it. And I don't know. That's all right. I'll move on. But some other improvements to the Model Y over the Model 3. It comes with a wireless phone charger. This is the QI. I don't know. how Is it Qi? Key? Key? <laughs> I don't know. Basically, it'll provide up to 15 watts of power for your for your wireless uh, phones, which is very nice. Uh, I have a wireless charger. Of course, mine is third party in my Model 3, and I love having a wireless charger. So that's really nice. And the Model Y also has some secret storage compartments. Jesse, we already knew about the secret storage. What, what are you in, talking about? It's in the frunk. Uh, no. Although, take a look at the frunk. It's much, much, much deeper than it is in the Model 3. Yep. So you cool. have a much bigger volume of stuff because in the Model 3, it's... It's like pretty shallow. Yeah. So that's cool. But um, okay. So you must be meaning that other secret compartment everyone knows about in the back of the Model 3 and X and S and no. right here in the Y. No, no, no. That, I mean, you're close. You're getting closer, getting warmer. So they do have that sort of like where the uh, spare tire used to be and where your exhaust system used to be area. And that is even deeper as well. So if you take a look at that, it's extraordinarily deep. You can fit a ton of stuff in there. Wait, but there's another secret storage there's area? There's another secret storage area. This one is similar to the Model X, the five seat configuration. Um, basically, instead of having that third row of seats, it's it's just flat, but you can take off a panel and there's a, a more shallow, because the motors are right underneath it, but a, a shallow uh, secret compartment. Oh, but this is only because the Model Y is now just shipping with five seats, not seven. That's true. Gotcha. So I'm, I'm assuming that the seven seater is not going to have this, but it's cool that now you have all this extra space in the Model Y on top of the fact that you don't have that shelf that's in, in the back of most sedans. Um, What's that shelf for? I really, I really don't know. Like, Is it to hide what's in the trunk? I guess so, but... Um, you know, so in the Model 3, it's fixed. You know, that's actually what the seats connect to. Right. In the Model Y, you don't have that. But it means that now, I guess, people can see into your trunk if they can see through the tint at all. So there's something else we found out reading the owner's manual. In the climate control operating tips section of the owner's manual, it says, Model Y uses a heat pump to maximize efficiency. Therefore, your air conditioning compressor and external fan may run and make noise even when the outside temperature is cold and your vehicle is heating or supercharging. So wait a minute. This is the only Tesla to have a heat pump? So yeah. you're talking about like in, say, the Model 3, there's a resistive heater that heats you up in the cabin. Right. And so now you're using a heat pump, which is more efficient because you're running this, this heat pump. I know it's very confusing and you have to basically study thermodynamics in, in order to like truly understand how it works. But it's going to more efficiently provide the same amount of heat as a resistance heater. It's almost like a reverse air conditioner. It's pulling heat out of the air and then transferring that energy to the cabin of the car or to the battery pack. Right. Yeah, so it's kind of like the back of your refrigerator, how but it's I do warm. Want, but I do want to ask you this. On cold days, I notice with other heat pumps that we have that it takes a lot longer to warm things up, whereas resistive heating, you know, the second you turn it on, it starts to warm that plate up and you've got some heat a few seconds later. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know whether there is not a resistive heater anywhere in the car or if it's smaller or if they, you know... So we don't know whether it's going to heat up faster or slower, um, but it is going to be different, um, All right, but well, more efficient. That's the bottom line, more efficient. And that's what I'm very happy about. If you're out there in a Model Y that you just got up, uh, Rip please, it apart. <laughs> please tear the whole thing no, to no, pieces. Not, no, I was going to say, just uh, turn it on if it's cold outside yes. and see if you can give us some idea of how quickly things warm up. But I guess I do want to point out, this should mean that you're going to get a little bit longer range in cold weather than, say, a Model 3. Yeah, and that's huge. Now, UBS analyst Patrick Hummel reported last week that out of a survey of 10,000 likely car buyers from six different countries, 28% said they will likely consider buying the Tesla Model Y. The survey shows 28% of global respondents would likely consider buying Model Y, which compares to 26% interest in Model 3 
back in 2018. So this, I think, is a really important point because the Model 3, I think everyone can agree, did pretty well. Right. Um, it's it's sold extraordinarily well. It's outcompeted most of its competition in most markets. So I think that we can all agree that that did very well. If we're seeing the same survey numbers, actually better survey numbers, um, at the same relative time, I'm going to assume that the Model Y is going to be a big success. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason it shouldn't. It's just a better Model 3. <laughs> exactly. In most respects. And the survey went on. It said 18% of U.S. survey respondents would likely consider buying Cybertruck. In the head-to-head -head comparison, the Chevy Silverado and the F-150 would still be preferred over Cybertruck, but Cybertruck is ahead of the Ram 1500. So Cybertruck's coming in third, and the, and Tesla's never sold a Cybertruck, right. not a single one. And I mean, we're one of the few people who actually even sat in it. Right. And so that's really interesting yeah. because I think that that kind of shows, and this is you know completely Separate from the Model Y, but it shows that truck buyers are getting a little sick and tired of the same old, same old in terms of the Ford F-150 and the Silverado every single year. Even though most buyers would still prefer those cars, just to see the Cybertruck anywhere on the list when they haven't sold a single one really tells you something. So we kind of teased you last week uh, with our latest project. Mm -hmm. Didn't give you much information, but uh, well, we've got a little bit better teaser right now. Meet champion race car driver. Blake Fuller. In 2016, he raced his Tesla Model S up Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, America's premier race to the clouds. And Blake broke the world record for the fastest production electric car. It's now 2020, and Blake is itching to do it again. On June 28th, Blake wants to break his own record, this time in a Tesla Performance Model 3. Today, we are launching the Electric Performance YouTube channel to share this story, the road to Pikes Peak. Want to join our racing team? We've got the driver. We've got the car. We've got the will to win. Join us in showing the world that the time is now for electric performance. So yeah, uh -huh. we have a car that we're going to get to be driven up Pikes Peak. It's going to be converted into a race car and we're going to race it up Pikes Peak. Well, I say we, Blake Fuller, who previously raced a Tesla up Pikes Peak, is going to do it again in a Model 3. Yeah. I'm so excited about this. I can't even tell you. The most important part I, here, I think, is mm -hmm. that we need you to head over to Electric Performance, which is our new YouTube channel. The link is down in the show notes there. So just click on that, head over there, and subscribe to it. Yep. We need to build up the subscriber base because that is where we're going to start telling the story about our road to Pikes Peak. So every week, we're going to bring you news about how we're getting to Pikes Peak because yes. this is not a straight path. Right. You might think, oh, you have a car. And Pikes Peak exists, therefore you just drive the car to Pikes Peak and drive it up and you're done. Uh, no, we need roll cages, we need uh, better braking systems. So there's going to be a lot of work that needs to go into both the car. There's testing. There's And and yeah, the driver uh, in terms of how he's going to have to drive this car at Pikes Peak to get the best time. Right. So you can see all of what goes into that, including lots of other bonuses and extras. If you head over to Electric Performance, and I know what you're saying right now, you're like, I just want to watch the rest of the news. Please take a moment. Please click the link. It's the first link. It's the very top link in the show description. Just click on it. Subscribe. If you don't want notifications, shut off notifications. We just really need your support. It's free. Just subscribe to that YouTube channel because we have so much exciting stuff that we're going to be doing. And also, if you own a company or if you run a company or if you're a part of a company or if you're an employee of a company and you think that your company would be uh, a good fit for a sponsor to work with us on this road to Pikes Peak, uh, please, we will put another link in the show description and that will be a form that will let you uh, reach out to us and talk to us about sponsorship opportunities um, because we, we need a lot of support to get this uh, car up the hill. Yeah. Um, very, very important. So yeah, if you know anyone who, who owns a small company or a big company or a medium-sized company, uh, please, I urge you to also fill out that form down below. So subscribe to the new YouTube channel. We're going to have tons of content. We've got it all planned out. So I'll very excited about that. And one more thing is that uh, we have a clip on the new channel. It's the only place you can see it of me and Blake racing around Coda. 
Yeah. Like the whole thing all together, put together with with music and funness. Well, and also if you want to share that teaser you just saw or you just want to see it again, yeah. that's the place to go. Right. Go to Electric Performance and share that with your friends because uh, that's awesome. Get them all to go over to Electric Performance. We want to build that channel up. It's going to be so cool. Please. According to The Driven, EV sales have taken off in Australia. So check this out, Jesse. Mm-hmm. See this chart here? It's got a lot of lines. It's very complicated to read. I'm going to help us through it here. Uh, it shows month on month from February of 2019 to February of 2020. So we're seeing one year apart. Okay. Um, and we're seeing that sales of diesel, electric PHEVs, hybrids, and petrol vehicles in each category. So see those really long lines there? Those mm-hmm. really big long lines? Yeah. Those are private EV sales, and they have jumped around 640% year to date. Whoa. 640%. Yeah. That's a lot. And I know you guys know what the next part of this is. Here's the next chart. <laughs> this is the car that did it. The Model 3. <laughs> Again, not the header. Uh, that's not the, the header of the chart. That's just a bar on the chart. That's the Model 3 compared to all of its competition. Yeah, so in one month, over 1,000 Model 3s sold compared to, I mean, just kind of piddly numbers of, of the other ones there. Like, I mean, we're talking six Zoes. Wow. Now, this is really important because Australia, sorry, Australia, but a little behind the times in terms of EV incentives and other things like that. So basically what we're seeing is a 640% increase with no EV incentives. It's just the product itself. Right. And that, I think, is what is so strong. We're not seeing the same number of sales of other products that are in the same segment, so to speak, in the same EV space. But just the Model 3 forging ahead. Yeah, Tesla's got 80% of the Australian EV market in February. Wow. That's just amazing. That is amazing. So this September, IBM and nonprofit Promare are going to be launching the Mayflower Autonomous Ship, which is an unmanned, solar-powered ship that will hopefully cross the Atlantic Ocean. Wait, so the the Mayflower, like like the Mayflower? Like the, I don't know if, if our non-American audience knows what the Mayflower is, but if you ever went into first grade in the United States, you know what the Mayflower is. That's what you remember, huh? Uh, the May, the, the April showers brings Mayflowers, and Mayflowers bring pilgrims. Is that how you remember? That was it. it. Yep, it was the the Puritan pilgrims, which we have inherited so much <laughs> lovely culture from uh, here in the states. Yep. So it's uh, going to be captained by an AI captain. Uh, AI same... captain, absolutely. So who is it? <laughs> uh, well, you know IBM's Watson AI. Oh, AI, AI, captain. artificial intelligence. Yeah, it's, it's not a it's not a person. It's so, a is it gonna say stuff like that, like AI captain? <laughs> nope, it's, it's not gonna say. No, that. it's not. Is it the same captain from Wally? Uh, Do they make him look like that? No, it, it's a computer. I th- did you not watch Wally? I did. Okay, I, the captain, the AI captain, was like a. Steering oh, wheel, the ship. Is that what it is? It I don't like? think so. Okay. Okay. Um, but it will set sail from Plymouth in the UK, and it will take 12 days to cross the Atlantic. Now, funny thing I realized was that um, the original Mayflower, which left England in 1620, mm-hmm. it traveled at two and a half knots. So it took forever to cross the Atlantic. Uh, this is going to cross the Atlantic in 12 days and then be landing in Plymouth, Massachusetts, where the original uh, Mayflower landed. Interesting. And it's going to be traveling at 20 knots. So that's how it can do it in 12 days. It's now being built in Gdansk, Poland. And they're testing right now the AI off the coast of Plymouth, UK, as we speak. I didn't know that the original Mayflower left from Plymouth, UK. Yeah. You thought they would have taught us that since they yeah. were so interested they just in care about the Mayflower. <laughs> just want to talk about what happened in America. Mm-hmm. So, Jesse, I've been reading all over uh, Twitter and other places that Chinese buyers are really upset at Tesla. What? the heck is going on so basically some chinese buyers have bought a model 3 without full self-driving they got it and the car has uh hardware 2.5 installed which is the same hardware package that i have installed in my car oh they were supposed to get hardware 3 well everywhere else is getting hardware version 3 installed in the car as standard regardless of whether you buy full self-driving or not but I mean, does this affect their car at all? It doesn't affect the way that it drives. And if they bought full self-driving, they would get this hardware uh, installation of hardware version 3. But why are they so upset then? Well, they're very upset. They're, they're in fact suing Tesla over this. 
Now, there is a little bit of background that you need to know. Obviously, we don't live in China, so this kind of background, we're like, what's going, what are they doing over there? Uh, we don't know. However, there was a really good explanation by Reddit user uh, Guan Qing, and he explains here that basically this uh, problem kind of traces back a little bit further and to a completely different company. So I'll read from his post here. Uh, the results of Volkswagen's Passat and Tiguan were very bad when they tested 25% offset impact in China. This is a huge scandal sweeping across China. In the tests, the A-pillars of these vehicles were completely broken, the airbags were distorted, and the driver would surely die. In contrast, Volkswagen's Passat and other models in the United States, the test results are good. Chinese car consumers and the media are very sensitive to the configuration of the same model in different countries. Volkswagen Passat now has the nickname Mobile Coffin in China. Once bad news appears, it is easy for Chinese consumers and the media to associate discrimination and double standard. So this is really where all of this hate is coming from. You oh, had I Volkswagen see. who put out the same car and it crash tested so completely differently. I mean, we showed some footage here. It it looks like a completely different car. In wait, the crash. whoa, whoa, whoa. So wait, this one we're seeing now is the Chinese version of the Passat? Yes. And you can see that that, that A-pillar completely folds. It And then uh, if we look in the interior, you see that the steering wheel just shoots off in the wrong direction, which means that the airbag isn't stopping the passenger at all, which means that his head goes boop oh, well, right on that dashboard. But how different could the American version be? It's pretty different. It's not better. Like the Passat didn't get the uh, you know top safety pick or anything like that. Oh, but wait, the A pillar there on the American version is staying completely intact. Absolutely, it's it's much better. And so this kind of points to the a difference in construction between wait, Chinese and American. Wait a minute. So they sold the same the same car. They called it the Passat. They mm -hmm. sold it to the Chinese, and the car is basically a mobile coffin. Right. Whereas the American version is a lot safer. Right. So no, I can see why they're upset. So, I mean, you have this uh, kind of zeitgeist of, okay, these, uh, uh, you know, foreign companies in our country uh, are going to try and kill us, essentially, by giving us uh, like a inferior, switch, yeah. right, inferior products um, that are, more, you know, safer in other countries. Now, I want to point out that Tesla didn't intend to give uh, Chinese buyers of the Model 3 a worse computer. It seems like it had something to do with supply chain issues. Right. And that basically they just, need, you know, didn't have enough of the right computers. But I can see that their communication was really bad. If they had just said, like, we will get you the right computer as soon as possible, so sorry, like, maybe a lot of people would have been like, oh, I understand. Right. Or to just let people know ahead of time, because essentially uh, the Chinese consumers did not know that they were going to be getting hard hardware 2.5. Now, does it make a big difference? Is it going to make the car any less safe? No. Should Tesla have handled that a little bit better, especially considering the circumstances? Yes. So you know this, Jesse, right? Uh, as you drive a car, the tires wear down, leaving you with less and less tread, and you finally have to buy new tires. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I knew that. But where does the tread go? Just... Magic. <laughs> Yeah, it, it seems to dis disappear. Right. It doesn't get pushed into the tire. Nope. It 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 gets uh, kind of like sandpaper on wood. It just kind of yeah it, tire it, dust. It's worn down as micro particles of pollution, and tire wear pollution accounts for millions of tons of pollution around the world every year. In fact, in Europe, there's 500,000 tons of tire wear pollution produced every year. It's the second largest microplastic pollutant after single-use plastic. So it's a big problem. Well, you want some good news? Yes, please. Some students at Imperial College London and the Royal College of Art have invented a device to capture that pollution at the source. Master's student Hanson Chang explains that the device is only about 60% effective right now, and there are challenges to solve, but hats off to them for undertaking this super important project. So you can see that the device has to be positioned as close as possible to the ground to capture the most amount of particles, and they kind of stick to the capture plate because the particles are charged, kind of like rubbing a balloon on your sweater or on your hair with the opposite charge to the plate. So um, I guess it's basically just a charged plate that attracts all the stuff, and then what, you got to wipe it off? Um, yeah, it keep, keeps it in there, and then you can recycle those particles. So actually, when you're done, I guess you have quite a, you know, like a handful of particles, which you can then recycle into other products. Something that isn't floating around in the air, exactly. you know, polluting I mean, Number place. one, you've just captured it so it's not in your lungs and, and floating around the planet. But number two, you actually can recapture and recycle. 
Interesting. Now, I mean, I know there's a lot of work to be done. This is just kind of a prototype, but the fact that they're working on it and the fact that this is a bigger problem than I had at first knew about. Like, right. I guess you never really think about that all those tires are wearing down and that wearing down stuff is in the atmosphere. Right. So BMW announced last week that its profits dropped 29% in 2019. Yeah, and it will be dropping 50% of its ICE powertrain variants starting in 2021. But the thing is, they didn't say which ones. Yeah, uh, I mean, we're, we're kind of guessing that it's got to be like the diesels and probably the V8, some of the bigger engines. Right. Keep in mind that 8.6% of Volkswagen's cars sold in the EU were electric or hybrid. Now, BMW also announced that they will not be selling the iX3 in the U.S. That Don't confuse that with the i3. The iX3 would be the electric X3, which is their SUV. Is it the ID3? No, it's the iX3. The, you know the X3, which is their SUV? Oh, okay, right. You put an I in front of it, that makes it electric. 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 The problem is that when BMW started to pitch that to their American dealers, mm -hmm. American dealers are like, no, that's not going to work in the U.S. Its range is going to be probably about 200 miles because it has a 74 kilowatt hour battery and it's a heavy vehicle. So uh, American dealers were like, I don't think our American consumers are going to want something with such a short range. I, I, I mean, I think what the American dealers were saying was, hey, we don't want to sell electric vehicles because they don't need any maintenance and we don't make any money from selling them. That could be why. I, I think that that might be a big reason why. I mean, I can see that... Yeah, it's going to be hard selling a, a vehicle that has a 200-mile range when you're up against the Tesla Model Y and X and 3 and other vehicles that have 200-plus miles of range, like at a bare minimum. BMW is also discontinuing their i8 plug-in hybrid. Um, and then you remember that in January, BMW's R&D chief, Klaus Froelich, said that BMW will plan to sell gas engines for at least... 30 years. He said the best assumption is that electrified vehicles, EVs and plug-in hybrids, will account for 20 to 30 percent of worldwide sales by 2030, but with a very diverse global distribution. So and I think we made fun of him at the time. <laughs> and I continue to make fun of him because, again, just last year, 8.6 percent of the cars were either electric or or hybrid. So now uh, BMW has announced that Froelich will be retiring in July to be replaced by Frank Weber, who led the engineering crew on the Chevy Volt. Oh, retiring. <laughs> well, Goodbye, Mr. Froelich, Froelich. You, can, you can either retire or we'll fire you. I mean, good riddance. I'm sorry to say good riddance, but I mean, he was not the right influence that you want at the top of your company leading uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of people whose livelihoods depend on you making the right decisions. Yeah. Off with their bikes! <laughs> what, what, what's going on? Well, the legal speed limit for standard e-bikes in France is 25 kilometers an hour, or 15.5 miles per hour, and you're only allowed to have 250 watts of power on your electric motor. Okay, so what? Well, now France has announced a new law, provision L317-1, that fines riders who are caught modding their bikes to go faster with up to 30,000 euros of fine, which is $34,000, and up to a year in jail. What? This applies to importers and sellers as well. So um, if you are selling a bike that has been modded so it can go faster, or if you are riding your bike and you've modded it and you can go faster, you will get a fine or could go to jail. Okay, wait a minute. 15.5 miles an hour, or 25 kilometers an hour, is not very fast. No. You can bike faster than that without an electric motor. And that's perfectly fine. You can go... Wait, no, no, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait. Yep. You can ride your bike as fast as you want. There's no speed limit to that. But in, And also, 250 watts of power is not that much. Nope. Like, that won't carry you up a moderately steep hill. Nope, it won't. Like, you'd have to put in most of the work right. to do that. And they're going to fine or you go to jail? Yes. Because how dare you go faster using a motor than your legs. But, okay, wait, hang on. Um, how fast do they go on the Tour de France? Oh, they can go up to 90 miles an hour. Oh, whoa! So they're getting they're getting pulled over by no, the no, French police. No, what are you doing? You are going too fast! No, as, you are under arrest! No, no, as I've explained to you, you can go as fast as you want on a bicycle under your own power. So, but, okay, Tour de France, right? And, of course, this is breaking the rules to the Tour de France, but let's say they had a motor... On their Tour de France How bike. How dare you say that? And and in, and they were pedaling faster than the, than the 15 miles an hour. Yes. They could get pulled over and be thrown in jail. 
Well, here's my question. Yeah. If I'm riding an e-bike mm-hmm. uh, that's completely legit in France, going okay. 15 miles an hour, and then I hit a patch where I just feel like riding a little faster, uh-huh. and I start going 20 miles an hour, it's my... Wee woo, wee woo, wee woo. What are you doing? You're breaking the law. No, I'm just pedaling a little faster. <laughs> no, you are breaking the law. We will no. throw you in jail. No, but I was pedaling. I was pe- That was me. No, no, no. <laughs> that is a motor on your back, Sekel. Y- yes, it you is. are under arrest. No, it is electric, but I was. No, pe- <laughs> you are breaking the law, monsieur. Hey, what, what, what are you in here for? Oh, uh, I uh, killed fourteen people. Oh gosh. Yes, I murdered them with a baguette. Oh no. <laughs> what are you in here for? I was riding my e-bike too fast. Oh, oh, incredible. This is stupid. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And How will you enforce it? A, how will you enforce it? B, it's ableist, okay? Because basically you're yeah. saying, uh, I mean, there are a lot of people who can ride bikes, right? We, we all know a, you know, eight-year-old who can ride a bike. But there are lots of people who can ride bikes as fast as they want because they're, they're fit. They're fit and, and in shape. An e-bike... And let me tell you from experience, an e-bike is a really nice way to go for a bike ride if you're not Lance Armstrong. Well, here's my – what's the problem, France? Right. Like, what, if, what are we if, worried if about here? If fast bikes are okay, <laughs> yeah. but fast e-bikes are not okay, what's the difference? Right. Exactly. If it's under my own power, what does that al- enable me to do in terms of How danger? How dare you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, what is, is there some threat? Is there some danger that being able to go over uh, 15 miles an hour? I mean, yeah, it goes fast, but all bikes can go fast if you can ride them fast. So are we worried that we're going to be riding e-bikes into crowds of people? I, I mean, know. I could understand if it's like if you go over 50 miles an hour, you know, if you go over 80 kilometers an hour or something like that, uh, you're in trouble. But but here's the thing. They've got a special class of e-bikes in France mm-hmm. called the Speed Pedelecs that are permitted to go 45 kilometers an hour, which is 28 miles an hour. Right. So they already have another class of bike that this is allowed on. So is it just a money thing? Do they want to get a special permit? Like, what the heck is going on? It's so stupid. If you're a French viewer, thank you for putting up with our French accent. Um, but go go yell at your government. Yeah. They're, they're doing the wrong thing. So Arkimoto, the three-wheeled vehicle that we've been telling you all about, has released its rapid responder, and the Eugene, Oregon Fire Department has started testing it. It can reach speeds of 75 miles an hour. In fact, we got it up to that speed when we were in Austin on the highway. It's got a 100-mile city range. And uh, as Eugene Fire Department said, at Eugene Springfield Fire, we pride ourselves on being a progressive organization that is always in search of innovative new ways to improve our services. In 2019, we responded to more than 40,000 emergency calls, and a large number of those could have been better serviced using the Arkimoto Rapid Responder. We are extremely proud to be the first firehouse in the world to deploy this cutting-edge vehicle and look forward to working with Arkimoto in this pilot program to create a world world-class sustainable EMS solution. So this I love because you this is going to save lives. Yeah. If you can get to the scene of an accident or a medical emergency just a matter of minutes sooner, you are going to save lives whether that's uh you know providing them with a specific kind of medical care or an AED, whatever it is, you are it's going to be so so important and being able to just kind of cut through different uh routes i mean because or just on campuses like there's yeah. a lot of college and corporate campuses where you can't drive a vehicle through it but this thing you could drive through right it, so you, you can, can get, get on to the some scene. footpaths or whatever and i mean it's gonna have sirens it's gonna get people you know out of the way and because again that that every second counts in this kind of scenario and i'm very excited that arkimoto is working on this now we aren't uh, stock analysts or anything like that. But I would like to point out that because of uh, the uh, double plus bad cold, uh, that the stock of FUV with fun utility vehicle, the Arkimoto stock, is super cheap right now. Yeah, and through no fault of their own. Yeah. The city of Honolulu in Hawaii has filed a lawsuit against 10 fossil fuel companies, including Aloha Petroleum, BHP Group, BP, Chevron, ConocoPhillips, ExxonMobil, Marathon Petroleum, Phillips 66, Royal Dutch Shell, and Sunoco. Honolulu's chief resilience officer, Josh Stanbro, said last week, For decades and decades, the fossil fuel companies knew that the products they were selling would have tremendous damaging economic impacts for local governments, cities, and countries that our taxpayers are going to be forced to bear. 
someone has to hold accountable corporations that color outside the lines and don't play by the rules. The place to hold them accountable is in court. And I would like to point out that Honolulu has lost 25% of its beaches due to rising sea levels and erosion. Now, I want, you know, people might be like, I don't know if court's the right place to do this. It it is the right place to do this. That you know, when we were establishing a court system, what were the problems that we were running into? You'd be like, I, Jonathan L. Fiedelbrook, do declare that your hogs ran through my barley fields, thus destroying the crop, and thus I shall take thee to court, for thou shall have to pay the damages of the damage that thy have done. Is, does this sound familiar? You have hogs running through some field and it destroys the field and you pay, have to pay for damages. Is this not the, the, pretty much exactly the same as oil companies letting the hogs run wild and essentially uh, destroying property, beaches, all sorts of stuff uh, that people need to make money, you sue them for damages. That's just what we do. And, I, and it seems like all oil companies should have to be held accountable because they knew. Yep. It would be one thing if it was like, oh, we just had no idea. But they knew, just like the tobacco industry knew that the, that people were getting cancer because of cigarettes, the oil industry knew way back to the 80s that this was doing harm to the environment and would have these impacts. And they chose to lie and hide it and try and get out of paying for it and doing anything about it. They didn't change their policies. They didn't say, oh, let's start weaning ourselves off oil and start funding looking for other projects. They said, no. We're just gonna be. We're just gonna get rich, and you know the world can pay for it. So take a look at this. It appears there is a new building on the Giga Shanghai site that uh, Tesla built practically overnight. I mean, the last time we looked at this in January, we saw the bones of a building to the south of the main factory, but now it appears to be almost complete. Yeah, they even have working shipping bays. Now, I think that this might be the battery pack assembly building. Yeah. And then look at this. They're extending the footprint of another building, and now they're working on another ginormous foundation here. They're doing pile driving and foundations for what looks like another massive factory where they will probably be making the Model Y. Wow. So thank you to Jason Yang and his excellent drone footage. Uh, yeah, the, the scope and scale and speed at which uh, Tesla China is able to expand is just incredible. I mean, it's possible uh, if we go at the same rate of building that they did last time that by October of this year, the Model Y could be rolling out in China. Right. That's incredible. And that would be in a separate facility. That would be in addition to all the Model 3s that would be rolling out in China. I mean, it's not too hard to imagine that they could just convert some Model 3 production lines over to Model Y in the existing Tesla Shanghai Gigafactory. Now, according to Reuters, Tesla, the U.S. automaker, which started delivering Model 3 electric sedans from its Shanghai factory in December, plans to add lines to make more battery packs, electric motors, and motor controllers, according to the document submitted by Tesla to the Shanghai government. So now in related Chinese news, according to Kuai Dongshu, Secretary General of the China Passenger Car Association, Tesla delivered 3,958 Model 3s in China in February. That's 400 more than they did in January. Now, keep in mind that by mid-February, the double-plus bad cold had already hit China hard. So according to Dong Xu, Tesla's market share is 30% of new energy vehicles, which is what China calls electric vehicles. 30% mm -hmm. of the Chinese market. And I mean, it just started in December and during a period where traditional car sales have dropped 80%. Yeah. That's staggering. And there's more news about uh, Tesla in China. To reduce the risk of spreading disease, Tesla has begun contactless test drives. Yeah, so check out this tutorial from Tesla. So basically, an interested customer calls or books a test drive online, and then basically Tesla will unlock the car and start the test remotely. And then there's even on-screen tutorials in the car, so you never have to have a Tesla employee with you in the car. This is really, really innovative. I mean, what other car company can sell cars like this? I mean, none of the screens in any other cars are going to be able to handle this. Do, do you see the innovation going on here? Right. The company is innovating so fast that it's just light years ahead of the competition. It can sell you a car without even having to talk to you right. like, in person. And that's the thing. Like, because Tesla set out on this completely different path by making a computer on wheels, instead of just being like, oh, it's a bunch of subsystems that we all stitched together, uh, and then we wrapped it up with duct tape, you know, you have an actual computer that can be reconfigured to do whatever you want. Yeah. Keeps it updated, keeps it fresh, as we see with the uh, over-the-air updates. 
updates, and then you're able to do stuff like this in times of crisis. So Axios and others are reporting that sources familiar with planning say that one of the locations being considered for the Gigafactory in the United States is Nashville, Tennessee. Now, wait a second. I thought that the Gigafactory was going to be built in Texas. What, what about Giga Texas? Well, I mean, Elon did tweet out, are you interested in having a Gigafactory in Texas? Uh -huh. But he never did say that's exactly where it's going. Here's my guess. Mm -hmm. I believe that this is a planned leak because sources familiar with planning, if anyone close to this group at Tesla leaked this, mm -hmm. Elon would know who it was. Okay. I mean, it's got to be a very small number of people who know. Okay. So if that ever got out, that person would be fired. Okay. So you think that they wouldn't leak it? No. Because there's not much. There's nothing to be gained from leaking it. I suppose Unless not. you want competition. So if you're trying to get Austin to compete with, let's say, Nashville, mm -hmm. then you leak it that it could be Nashville. So now Austin has to come back with some better deal for you. Like, oh, well, no, we'll get you some more tax breaks. I see. And then you keep playing them off each other. So hmm. that's my guess is that they're getting closer to some negotiation and they just want to make sure that uh, – they're getting the best deal they can. Interesting. Now, in an email to the Wall Street Journal, Elon said incentives play a role, but so do logistics cost, access to a large workforce, and a wide range of talents and quality of life. What he's basically saying is incentives are probably the most important thing because, I mean, what is really the biggest difference between Nashville, Tennessee, and, say, Austin, Texas? There's not much. I mean, it's not like there are a bajillion better people in Nashville, Tennessee right. than there are in Texas. It's just location. It's just, yeah, location and uh, and incentives. And, I mean, we got some clarification here on this tweet um, from Fred Lambert, who was asking Elon, are you talking about two separate uh, gigafactories? Right. And Elon clarified, no, we're talking about one that would make Cybertruck and Model Y. So Model Y and Cybertruck are going to be built in this middle-of-the-country gigafactory. Right. And this middle-of-the-country gigafactory is what would have been or could be the Giga Texas <laughs> facility. It's very right. complicated. It doesn't seem like it needs to be, but it is. <laughs> it is. All right, it's time for our video contributor story. And this week, we've got our buddy Scott, who interviewed us at Fully Charged Live in Austin, Texas. All right, so we're here with uh, Zach and Jesse at uh, Fully Charged Live in Austin, Texas. And uh, thanks for taking a moment and uh, having a word. Uh, first question I'd like to ask you is, uh, uh, what do you think is the most important story you've covered on Tesla Time News or the most interesting interview? I mean, one that brings out to me is we interviewed Delaney Reynolds. Uh, she's a young climate activist, and we did this early on in the channel. We see, occasionally we see your headquarters of Tesla Time News on the show. What's the next green tech or interesting project you've got going on for your headquarters? So we just got the power walls installed. Yeah, we have so four power walls. We're going to be doing some shows on those because that is awesome. Yeah. And then also geothermal. Uh, we want to get geothermal. Oh. Get rid of natural gas entirely. Uh, that would make me so happy. Dandelion? Maybe. That's what they're not in our state yet, but I'm hoping that that's going to be the company. Wow. And uh, you just had a power outage, uh, and the Tesla Powerwall saved you. Saved the entire show. Yeah. Saved, oh. saved the show. You're in the middle of talking. Wasn't it about it? Yes, it was, it was really weird. Really weird. Uh, next question is, uh, what impact does uh, uh, getting engaged and now you know had on your family? Jesse, what's your girlfriend think of this? She's extraordinarily supportive. I couldn't do the show without her. So, Are you just saying that because I'm filming you? No, I, seriously. <laughs> you, there, you, and you would tune in one week and... Jesse decided to leave, or Jesse decided to, uh, he's not doing this anymore. Um, yeah, the support that I get from her is uh, pivotal to the entire show. Yeah, we get a lot of support. I mean, we take over the entire house pretty much to film it, so if it weren't for their support, it, we would never be able to do it. Uh, bonus question, when's the blooper re reel coming out? Oh, we've got, uh, we told the boys to start saving, so we've got lots of bloopers now, yeah. so pretty soon. And I think we'll probably put it out on the clip channel. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Now you know. Now you know. Thank you so much, Scott, for coming out and uh, talking to us. Scott is one of our patrons over on Patreon, and uh, I just want to thank everyone who supports us on Patreon. Every opportunity I get, I want to thank them because they make this channel possible. All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories, and that's where we thank our patrons by giving them uh, some extra bonus stories that we do every week. You can head over there and become one if you'd like for as little as a buck a month. Mm -hmm. and we've got some pretty cool stories this week that we can't share with you here on Patreon. Tesla Time News. Right, and we're going to be talking about the uh, double plus bad cold. It's a 
Hey, we're back from our Patreon bonus stories. It's and, time for our uh, Patreon shoutouts. But you, Jesse thinks that I hit on something. Oh, big. you missed the best idea ever. Really? He took ever? two completely different things, put them together. Wow. Oh man, you missed it. Sorry. All right. Well, it's time for the Patreon shoutouts. These people know what we're talking about. Scott Pennington, Tomas Hudson, Mark Pressy, Josh Creel, Richard Niebling, Storm, David Janicula, Greg Miller, Charlie and Kevin, Christopher Jones, Sir Word Seven, Edwin Namon, Robbie Nijar, Rene Neiman, and Antonio Cesar Hansen Monte Pagado. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for supporting us. We can't do this show without the people that we just talked about. All right, it's time for Elon's Tweets of the Week, and he's been very busy. Mm -hmm. uh, first, millionth Tesla. So Boom. This, this is the first automaker to make a million electric cars. Yeah. Where's the press? <laughs> Nothing. 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 Okay. Millionth car, whatever. It's the a big only, achievement. <laughs> in the history of Earth, the only <laughs> company to make a million electric cars. Well, we don't know what, you know. History of Earth. We don't know all the history of Earth. Those dinosaurs, they could have been they making. They could have made one. Uh, then Elon said, to those who quietly help advance the causes we mutually believe in, knowing advancing the cause is the only reward. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Elon. I mean, of course, he's he's making money. He only makes a dollar a year. Just he want does to remind make, you. It's true. Um, and it seems like, from what I can gather, that basically everything that he's going to make is going to go into getting us to Mars, which yeah. is th uh, the most important thing I think you can probably be working on. How about this for Mr. Nice Guy? Evelyn said, Elon, can you please grant Andressa permission for a SpaceX tour? She will only be in LA for a week. Yeah, and Andressa says here that SpaceX really inspired me to pursue my dreams of becoming Brazil's first female astronaut. And Elon said, sure. And then so she got to do the tour and she said, had the time of my life. This place is so inspiring. I can't even describe. Thanks, Elon. Thanks, SpaceX. So it really shows that when Elon, you know, puts one of those one word re responses where you're kind of like, did he really? Can you imagine showing really? up to the door and be like, <laughs> he said, sure. Said, sure. <laughs> Let me Let in. Let me in. <laughs> uh, and then this one. Um, so Elon <laughs> tweeted out a picture of Occupy's Mars. Yeah. And then uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson said, uh, Elon, can I assume you know that the Mars in your Occupy Mars tweet is actually an image of the full moon during a lunar eclipse? But the image on my shirt is Mars for real, Neil. And uh, Elon said, yes, it's my Twitter banner pic. To be totally frank, I did an image search on my phone and posted without looking closely. <laughs> I like that he's, uh, you know. He's honest. He's honest and he's yeah. not perfect. No. Oh, we're, I all, thought it was, we're all going to make dumb Mars. mistakes like that. Yeah. Um, Hob Grovelin said, Elon, cars should have saved driver preferences linked to profiles on their phones so that when they connect their Bluetooth, the seat, mirrors, and temperature controls adjust automatically to the driver's save preference. Can you make this happen? Elon said, coming soon. Don't you already have that? My car has been doing that since I bought it. Wait a minute. So you get into your car and it will automatically know that it's you because of the Bluetooth and then right. change the settings to that? If, if someone else has uh, their phone with a different setting connected to their phone, which is a setting that you can do in the car, and they get into the car without my well, phone. Well, then why do you say coming soon if it already has I don't it? know. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, sense. I don't have it in Sparky, so maybe he meant it's coming to all cars? I don't know. I'm confused. I'm confused, um, Then Eugene Lee said, thanks for the update. When will the referral program allow Y sales to be included? Thanks, Elon. And Elon said, once production has exceeded pre-orders. Hmm. So that's interesting. Well, I mean, it makes... Since you don't want people to be using referral codes for pre-orders that they had already signed up for because they were watching the live stream event of right. the Tesla Model Y unveiling. But, I mean, it means the referral program will continue, I guess. I guess so. Uh, Tesla Tunity said, hey, Elon, can anything be done via software to show the health of the 12-volt battery over time and provide better warning to its eventual failure? Elon said yes. So, again, in the Tesla Model 3, S, and X, there is one of those car batteries <laughs> that Tesla, I think they're actually mandated by law to have one in the car. There must be one in the Y. That's another thing we need to know. Rip apart your front. Pull it apart. Yes. Come I want to see every piece. <laughs> Get a wrench and a hammer and a, and a plasma cutter. Uh, Tesla owner Silicon Valley said, can we review sentry mode videos in the car off the USB drive? Elon said, we'll discuss with team. 
Uh, Evelyn said, so Starship prototypes are made of 301 stainless steel. You mentioned SpaceX will switch. What is the new stainless steel alloy mix that will be used? Elon said some parts will use 304L as has higher toughness at cryo temps. We'll move to internally developed alloys probably end of year. What's 304L? It's just a different type of stainless steel. Hmm. Um, but the, the internally developed alloys... For those of you who don't understand what that means, that means that you need a team that is working on developing your own stainless steel alloy. That is not cheap, um, but it could reap some amazing benefits. I'm very excited about that. Tesla tweeted out, Giga New York built four megawatts of solar roof last week, enough for up to a thousand homes. And Elon said, congrats to the Giga New York team. That's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of roofs. Yeah. And if that's the rate they're going to be making them, we're, we're good now. No, we're not. We're not good. <laughs> there needs to be more. More, but yeah, but we're getting good. We're getting good now. Getting there. Um, and then uh, this last one here, uh, Elon said, "Fear is the mind killer," and that is from Frank. He, I think he's quoting Frank Herbert, who is a science fiction author. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. Where the fear has gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain. Wow. Very important. I mean, that very, very insightful. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. All right. It's time for community mail time. Community mail time. So Andreas has worked on this design of a cyber hatch. I like it. So if you don't like the Model Y, maybe you like uh, this cyber hatch design. Let us know what you think in the comments below. So our friend Somi spotted the cyber truck um, in the back of the camping Easter egg. So if you put your car in camp mode mm -hmm. um, and you leave it for about 10 minutes, you will get this is, picture that pops up. Is it under the tent? Where is it? No, it's way in the back. You'll see the Cybertruck way oh, back yeah. there. Now, this uh, image came as part of the uh, Christmas update uh, at the end of last year. And so that was after the Cybertruck unveiling. So there wasn't like... It's not like there was some secret, right. you know. It's just an Easter egg. It's just a, it's a fun Easter egg, just like the, you know, the little dog that sits on the chair as well. So our friend Jake fixed the I4 concept. Um, last week I had been complaining about the gigantic nose on the I4 concept because. And he put a muzzle on it. Yeah. It, now, the first time I saw this fixed image, I was like. <laughs> um, then I then I took another look back at I it. I kind of like it. It doesn't look that bad. And I think also, you know, if you... Because right now it's kind of top nosy kind of mm -hmm. thing. But if they kind of, you know, made it a little more centered in terms of the... I don't know. What is that? An octagon kind of yep. shape. I think it would look fine. So Darren and Perry sent us this ad that they got in the mail from Lexus. Trade in your Tesla. You've had your fun. Now it's time for zero compromise. <laughs> what? What? You've had, You've your, had fun. your fun. <laughs> time to go back to the crappy, smelly car. <laughs> what? This is so awful. Yeah. What an awful sentiment to be like. All right, you guys. So, like, as if as if you had done something wrong. Did they to begin to, with? Did they have to pay Tesla for the list? Like, how did they get the list? I don't know. All right, let's play this video from our buddies Dirk and Mario. Hi, I'm Dirk. And I'm Mario. And you're watching Community Mail Time on Now You Know. We would like to share our event called Wall Fever on the 13th of June 2020 with you. It's a huge Tesla meetup in Fulda, right in the heart of Germany. So basically, every big city is uh, less than four hours away. It's the second time in the last year there was the first Tesla Model 3 meetup. Uh, there were 200 to 250 Teslas. And this year we're gonna have it a bigger party. What will you find there? We have the community talk, our members and the guests can talk to each other. And we have talks on stage. We have scientists there, not only from the YouTube community, but we are, there are politicians and experts in solar, in charging, infrastructure, and so on. Yeah, and uh, they will talk about stuff like charging infrastructure, the energy grid, and of course, a big topic in Germany, 
uh, how far are the German mm -hmm. OEMs, the big car companies, compared to Tesla and other new um, EV companies, uh, let's say, from China. But besides the serious part, we also um, take care of the fun. So um, we have a huge area. It's a former military airbase from United States. Um, where uh, we have landing strips and we will have driving experience. So we will offer safety driving experience for the participants and to uh, put the cherry on the cake, we also have drift experience. So experts will show what track mode version 2 can actually perform. So Zach, if you are in Europe or even in Germany again, last year year you were here i think um you're invited to come and to share this event and so now you, you know. know yeah so that's going to be volt fever june 13th in germany you can order tickets on their website see in the show notes below for the link and dino was heading out to the special olympics polar plunge in the chesapeake bay so oh it's that's chilly cold. it's cold he did that for money he did that as a fundraiser which was very nice but on his trip he found this in Easton, Maryland. So is that a supercharger? I'm in? not sure if this is a supercharger going in or if this is a, just a power pack. Well, because let's, let's look at the map and see if there's a planned one for this area. So there isn't one. I oh. put a dot there. That, that green dot is where he found it. Oh, it, so this is probably just a power pack. It could be a power pack. It wouldn't be the worst place in the world for a supercharger. It is pretty close to that, that other one. Um but right, yeah, let's it, send out the, the <laughs> investigative special forces. Yeah, go there we find go. out. Go, go figure out what's going on. All right, it's time for on-air question of the week. Now, we've gotten lots of questions about the Pikes Peak Electric Racing Team um, asking how people can learn more about it. So we had it under wraps until today, but as you just saw earlier in the show, we've just unveiled our Electric Performance YouTube channel with Blake Fuller. So please head over there and subscribe. That's super important because you'll be following the weekly videos we'll be posting about the story of the road to Pikes Peak. It's going to be super exciting, and we'll have opportunities soon for you to join the team in many different capacities. So, yeah, I mean... You're close enough to the end of the video to where if you if you wanted to just head over to the Electric Performance channel and subscribe and then go on with the rest of your day, you know, you know, we'll let it we'll let it slide. You can uh, right mouse click, can't you, and open a new tab? Yeah, but if you're watching on a TV or on your phone, oh right. But just hey, please head over there. Please subscribe. It's going to make a huge, huge difference. We need as many people on there as we possibly can. It's going to just make the whole process a whole lot more doable. Um, right now it seems doable, but we're a little nervous. <laughs> and y having you subscribe is going to make a big difference. So please yeah. head over there. Please subscribe to our new YouTube channel. It's going to be exciting. We're going to have lots of fun stuff on there. Yeah. We promise. All right, it's time for the results of our Patreon poll. What was the question this week? The question was, did you order a Model Y? And do you have it yet? And one person has already taken delivery of their Model Y. Wow. And I'm pretty jealous, and I'm also pretty upset that they didn't uh, take any pictures to share with us. I'm just saying. They're busy saying. driving it. They're busy driving I'm it. just saying. Um, a lot of people are interested in getting a Model Y. Yeah. Um, if you took the number of people who've ordered and delivered and the number of people who are interested to see what people think of it, a big old number, especially compared to the people who aren't interested in it. All right, it's time for our supercharger reviews, and these are sponsored by our friends at Evanex. If you're looking for fantastic accessories for your Tesla, then check out Evanex and use our discount code to save you even more. Hello, Zach and Jesse. I'm here in Austria in Kitzbühel. Um, I'm South African, and I'm on a holiday here in, uh, in Kitzbühel, one of the world's most famous uh, ski areas. Um, behind me we've got three superchargers, they are charging at 120 kilowatt. Um, in the area you've got a little cafe where you can get some cool drinks and some snacks. Um, there's a, at the top there's, there's some uh, rooms that you can stay in uh, where you can live and you can see another Tesla pulling in. Uh, I've seen about four Teslas here charging. Um, one of the strange things is at the back, you have to where you park, where you drive through at the end, there's some uh, a garage where you can service your car. So it's part of the, the garage. And uh, yes, yeah, Zach, Zach and Jesse, I would rate this about a four out of ten because there's not a lot of amenities in the area. Uh, but it is in a very beautiful 
uh, place in Austria. As you can see, there's the mountains uh, full of snow. Hello, Zach and Jesse. Wayne Dufty in West Australia here in Perth. This is the only Tesla supercharger in WA, population of 2 million people. We're about 150 kilometers south of Perth. Perth is about 1.5 million people. And this is a six stall supercharger in Eton, which is on the way down south. Um, we need more, please, Tesla. Thank you. Bye. Hey, Zach and Jesse. So today, we're in beautiful Lake Placid, New York, at the Best Western um, Adirondack Inn, Lake Placid Destination Charger. So today we have a beautiful, um, probably like a 2017 or 18 Model S P100D Ludicrous. And uh, we have two Tesla Destination Chargers. And we also have one Level 2 Charger over here. So yeah, this is the location. I'd give it about a, I don't know, what would you give it? 10 out of 10? Uh, yeah, I think a 10 out of 10. Yeah, this is probably so far the most convenient destination charger in Lake Placid. They should be adding a supercharger here soon, but it doesn't say. It says 2019, but it's uh, December 2019 and they still haven't put it in, so probably next year, it's looking like. So yeah, so we'd give it a 10 out of 10, because just over there, um, behind the hotel, there's some great um, dining and shops, and of course, Main Street Lake Placid is basically the best that you can find in the Adirondacks. As far as food, there's tons of restaurants and um, other lodging options and um, like skate shops and uh, shopping centers, many, many small shopping centers and there's a Starbucks and plenty of other things but yeah that's it for now. See you later Zach and Jesse. Bye! Thank you for those uh, supercharger reviews and yeah. destination chargers. And, I love them. And by the way if you're like planning a trip we have a whole section of our website dedicated to the supercharger reviews on a map so you can actually find all of them yeah. because it would be really hard to find all of them otherwise it's time for new superchargers that are going in this week what do we got the first supercharger in bulgaria the four stall in plodiv bulgaria the six stall version three in maple creek saskatchewan canada the first supercharger in serbia the four stall in aleksanak serbia and number two in Serbia, the four stall in Belgrade, Serbia. Number 520 in Europe is the 40 stall version 3 supercharger in Leertopen, Norway. Number 97 in Canada is the 12 stall version 3 in London, Ontario, Canada. And number 792 in the USA, 1,823 in the world is the 8 stall version 3 supercharger in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Nice. I love to see ones in new countries. All right, it's time for our Patreon giveaway where you can uh, win yourself an EcoWare t-shirt. So to get yourself in this big barrel of fun, you just uh, join up on Patreon. The higher level you join, the more times we put you in the basket so you have a better chance to win. And uh, who's going to win a free EcoWare t-shirt this week, Ooh, Jess? Let's find Because remember, out. when uh, when you get the tea, we plant the tree. Yes, and the winner is Daniel Barker. Congratulations, Daniel. You got yourself a EcoWare t-shirt of your choice, and you made it to the end of the show. And, uh, you know, this week is... It was a tough week, I'll be honest. It was pretty scary. Yeah. Um, and uh, you might be wondering why we can't talk about that. The double plus cold? The the double plus bad cold. That's because YouTube won't allow us to. Thanks, YouTube. That's so great. Yeah, what a, what a Orwellian. What a wonderful feeling. Filming 1984. To not be able to talk about something uh, for fear. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That, that, something that's happening globally around the world and right. is constantly developing. You right. wouldn't want people talking about that on your platform. No. So, sorry to throw so much shade at YouTube. It's not our favorite thing to, th to, to do, but uh, it's not the best platform. But there is nothing better. <laughs> yes. So, that's why we're here. That's why you're watching it on YouTube. Brought to you by YouTube. Um, yeah, it's kind of like ice vehicles throughout <clears throat> history. It's like... 
There was nothing better. There wasn't better, anything better, right? At some I mean, point. the other day I was watching a Bloomberg show on, you know, it was an hour long show about the EV. Mm-hmm. And they started off like, let's go back in history. Right. And the history they told us was wrong. <laughs> really? And I was so mad about it because it was, well, here's the thing there were some facts that were correct, but when you put them in the wrong uh, configuration, configuration yeah. or whatever, and then you just gloss over other, like, whole decades. Right. And then you're like, and then this happened. And it's like, no, that's not what happened. <laughs> it's not the whole truth. And, and it just it was like pulling my hair out. Yeah. I'm like, this is the the reality that you're telling the world about right. things? And then they were like, so if you think that uh, Elon Musk is too crazy for you, there's other companies working on electric cars. They just glossed over yeah. everything he'd done. And I was just like, darn it, Bloomberg. Right. And, I mean, so please, uh, you know, this is truly the end of the show. We're not going to talk about anything else interesting. Please head over to our new channel electric performance the yeah. it's the first link it's the first link right there you're wondering what else you wanted to watch there's actually a little bit of content in there yeah we we've, we've got on there some content uh, never seen before I so, think, of you uh racing with blake so yeah we got that clip oh and we, we got, got a plan for a lot of cool content yeah. going up there so you can start to learn about how we're gonna get because I don't know how we're going to get to Pike's Peak. No. It's not going to be easy. No. We're going to be making it up as we go here. I mean, Blake knows how to do it. But right. like, so you're going to get to learn from Blake every week how we're getting to Pike's Peak. So have you ever wondered like behind the scenes of a race car? Like, how do they do it? How do they build a team? And if you want to be part of the team, you can be part of the team. Yeah. So head over there. Hit the subscribe button. Please, 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 please. That is all that I'm asking you to do. Thanks. See you next week. Now you know. know.